Hi everyone, it's Andy from Hobby Headquarters. Well today I've got a, a new kit to uh, show and build for you. This is TACOM's 135th scale Panard AML90. Now uh, the AML portion of it is actually a French abbreviation for uh, light armored car. And then the 90 uh, signifies that it had a 90 millimeter uh, gun on top of it in a turret. Now they also made an AML-60, which Tacom has also made as well, and this had a 60 millimeter mortar inside of it. So a little bit different. Uh, the one I decided to build right here I think looks a little bit cooler with this big gun. Now Panard built 4,000 of these uh, vehicles, different variants, starting in the early 1960s. It weighed about five and a half tons and it had a three-man crew. Now a whole host of different countries uh, would get small numbers of these. Uh, a lot of African countries, South America. The one we're going to be building up is the Israeli version that comes with the, uh, the decals and things inside of it to do the Israeli version. Now the Israelis purchased 29 of these from the French and were actually used quite extensively throughout the uh, 60s and 70s, even up into the, uh, the early 80s from what I was able to read. I oh, also should point out too, it also had a, a coax 7.62 millimeter uh, machine gun in the side as well. Now there was a little bit of controversy too. Uh, during one of the wars there, it was reported that some of these AML 90s were able to actually knock out some T-54s. And there was a lot of uh, scholars that said that that was impossible to happen based on the 90 millimeter gun. And they said there was, the Israelis didn't do that. But after further testing and stuff, and it was some really, really good shots on it. I mean, there was only certain areas you could knock it out with that gun, but they actually proved later on that they could knock them out with these. So the Israelis have a couple of kills with the, uh, with the 90 millimeter on it. And the Israeli one looks pretty cool. I mean, there's a lot of other variants inside with the camouflage, but um, if you guys remember, hopefully you can see it back there, we've got our Magok 3, and I did the desert diorama with it. And, I just figured with the Israeli one, we can put that on there as a little display piece too, based on where it's you know supposed to be. Looks like a, a great kit. It's all new tooling, of course. A uh, very small vehicle too when it builds up. It's only probably about five inches long uh, for the hull, you know, the body of it, I should say. Uh, looks like a really nice kit. Uh, four sprues inside, plus all the little tiny stuff, so it should go together fairly easy. Uh, everything from Tacom usually fits pretty well, so I don't think we'll have a problem with that. So let's get started on it. Okay, I've begun to uh, start taking uh, some of the major parts off so we can start sanding up and getting ready for it. Uh, before we go any further, though, I just thought I would show you what the, uh, the chassis on this vehicle looks like. And it's a little tiny bathtub style hull, as I like to call it. It's pretty nicely detailed, so that's one less thing we have to put together all those little parts, as well as some of the unusual uh, upper portions are all molded as one big piece too. And just I was dry fitting just a little bit of it before we start going and everything seems to fit pretty well. So you'll have a vehicle like that plus this, uh, this turret assembly. Very small turret of course, but uh, you can get the general idea of it. Now one other thing I want to talk to you guys about is I've heard some people complain about TACOM that their, uh, their connection points are really big. And, they are big connection points on all the parts, but I've noticed that as long as you can get in there with the sprue cutters and using the flat edge up against the part, it does a pretty good job that way. And then when it comes to parts that uh, you have like a rounded surface, don't get your, your cutters super, super close. Try to leave a tiny little bit of it behind. And so like this is a round part. Cutting that off the way it is right there, you'll be able to go in with your sanding stick later and round that over, and you shouldn't have any problem with it. So, yes, they are a little large, but honestly, as long as you you know take a little time, you'll have no problem at all with uh, having the large pieces like that. So what I'm going to do now is uh, I'm going to follow the instructions, of course, but we're going to start assembling the, uh, the main body of the vehicle. And it's uh, pretty straightforward, just looking at some of the parts here. We go. Just gotta get that on in there and so I'm gonna get my glue out um, I got to finish sanding all these parts off I just cut them off the sprue to kind of start getting ready for it so I'm gonna go ahead and get all these sanded up and we'll start showing just a little bit of somehow the construction goes together 
Okay, I'm in the process right now of gluing on some of the little sub-assemblies that we've started to assemble. And this little part right here is one of the sidebars. There are two rather large uh, injection pin marks on these, which normally if it's inside the vehicle, it's no big deal, at least to me. I, if you don't see it, I don't worry about it in my opinion. But I think part of these might be visible through, uh, through the wheel well. So might want to take care of those. It'd just be slight, but in case someone looked in there, you'd see two big giant, you know, injection pin marks. Now, when it comes to uh, these pieces, these have to be removed right here. These are, these are another type of injector pin mark that just come off, and we can just sand that down a little bit, and we'll show you how this goes into place here. A little minor thing too I thought was pretty cool on this the uh, the hatches on the back of this look really really cool they're very very three-dimensional for for lack of a better term on it they look like they uh, are separate pieces and not just you know like a, like a plastic toy would be and then finally these this piece right here will get glued into shape and this just kind of gives you a general idea how quickly oh, that's gonna come up from the bottom like that uh, everything can go together on this so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and put like some of the doors on here. I've got some round doors. I actually have to finish sanding this. I didn't notice too. So we'll go ahead and just start putting some of the basic parts together and we'll come back and show you what it looks like. Okay, I've started gluing more and more parts on and just called out a minute ago. To, I thought I had missed something on the sanding. Don't sand this part off. This part is actually part of the vehicle, this little nub right here. At least it is in the first couple of pieces of instruction. Also, there's a one other thing to these little uh, little bumpers right here. It keeps the wheel from going up too high. Uh, they show you gluing this one into place, but not any of the other ones, and they suddenly just appear in the instructions. So before you have a hard time getting into a tight little area, don't forget to glue all of those on all at once. And one other thing too, uh, I'll point out to you too, uh, hopefully you can see it. I'll kind of pull them a little bit closer. One thing I really appreciate about Tacom sprues are these big, very, very easy to see, because they're actually molded hollow, letters on each one of them. And especially, I like to leave them right on the edge of my cutting mat, and it's very, very visible to go, oh, I need part E1, and, and then G7, and then D something else. It's very easy to grab the sprue, just because it's very clearly laid out. And I really do appreciate that Tacom does something like that, because it cuts down on having to dig through your, your parts, trying to figure out which one is which. Okay, as you can see, we've gone ahead and attached the uh, the rear fenders here, as well as we started putting on some of the internal parts. In the front, uh, you have the ability to make the, uh, the steering actually work, which uh, we might be able to do. Normally, I will glue that stuff down into place, so so we don't have any breakage later, but... So after this gets glued on, there is another piece that goes on here that you have to take a little screwdriver, heat it up, and melt it through. So when you move one piece, the other wheel will move as well. And then after we get that all set up, we, I've gone ahead and glued the front fenders together. I have to do some sanding on them. There's actually three parts that make up this, this real thin outer edge, as well as the two big pieces, but I think they build up very nicely. And was just doing a little dry fitting before filming this and it all seems to fit very very tight and well on it so what I'll do is I'm gonna go ahead and finish putting the rest of all these pieces on get the front fenders on and it's turning out to be a cool little vehicle based on the shape that we see right here so we'll come back in a few minutes and show you what it looks like one little thing I'm gonna point out to you guys too is in the instructions you'll come along to these little areas that say 13-1, 13-2 uh, basically, it's a number with a you know a dash and another number on it, and this is the way Tacom gives you to differentiate between two different types. So you can either put this type of part on or this type of part on. It's a little confusing there, looking at it right away until you realize, oh, those parts are going in the same spot. So choose uh, the ones that's for the correct version that you want or the type that you want on it. But then everything else is the same on it. Okay, I'm just about to start building up the uh, the wheels and tires uh, assemblies, but I thought I would show you this real quickly. When you go to attach this upper plate on top of the body, uh, it has kind of the appearance when you first put it into place that it doesn't want to fit properly. Rest assured, it does fit properly, but you, there is a certain way that I found that it was easier to get it on, and that was to glue this portion down right here from up underneath here. 
and let that set up for a little while, get really, really strong, and then come back and you're going to have to like flex these pieces down. There is supposed to be a little bit of a flare up on it, but you want all of these to line up. And there is a fairly large gap on it until you get that glued down. You put your little bit of liquid cement in there and then you can squeeze that down, hold it there for a while, and it, it'll fit really, really well. Uh, as it goes for the uh, the driver's hatch up front here, I'm going to just lay it in place here after I clean it up, but we're going to leave it unglued so we can go back after we do all of our painting to get the, uh, the vision blocks in. Also, as we're doing this, we're leaving out a few other parts like the clear lenses on the front as well. We'll do those after we do the painting. I'm also leaving off some of the uh, little little tiny hooks and grab handle, things like that. And we're going to put those on very, very last. And that's just strictly so we don't end up knocking off these parts while we're handling it to put the other things on. Now, as it comes to the uh, the tires and wheels, the uh, the tire portion of it is actually very nicely molded. It is a... Uh, it is a rubber. I don't know if it's actually, I'm going to have to see when I actually put the glue on it, uh, if it's rubber or a, just a real soft plastic. What I'm doing on this, this one is a little bit more assembled, uh, and it's only dry fitted on there. I am going to be leaving the hubs separate, so this still comes apart. And I gone over with the sanding stick and roughed up the tread on, on this just so it's not so make sure the parting line is gone and also makes it get a little bit rougher and then we will glue and paint these portions of it separately put them in place be able to pull them off won't glue them in place I should say we're we're going to glue them after all the uh, the parts are painted and I'll, I'll go over this with a NATO black paint then put all these on just so it's easier than rather than having a mask since we already have separate pieces on it and like I was telling you earlier, so all the glass will get put in last as well as any of the other. Just to make it easier on ourselves, be looking forward so we don't have to do a lot of extra masking or anything like that when it comes time to paint. Well, here we are in the, uh, the process of assembling up the, uh, the turret for the vehicle. There are quite a few little small little parts and also it's got a really cool stackable uh, piece for the muzzle brake on here. It's made up of four little parts, went together really well, fit very well. Uh, I do have to do some more cleanup on the barrel. The tube came as one piece, so there's just a little parting line that I've started to sand out of there. And then of course, uh, once we get that completed up, we can go ahead and glue that into place. You'll also notice too, just like on the body, I've left out all of the clear lenses for on those parts. and. There's enough room that we can get it up from underneath here and still get it into place, so that should work out really well. Uh, just got done with the, uh, the the first scheduled live stream just a few minutes ago. Many of you may have seen me post this on there and really enjoyed it, so uh, look forward to more of those in the near future. But back to this, the uh, the kit is going together very easily. Lots of, like I said, lots of little parts in here. Uh, that's got to come down a little bit more, but. Uh, no problems with fit or anything so far. So we got to do a little bit more cleanup sanding, put a few more parts on it here, and uh, we'll show you what it looks like when it's all completed. Okay, as you can see here, I've completed uh, finishing the majority of the build. And what I mean by that, you can see there's quite a few pieces that uh, still need to go on, but because of the painting process, it'll be a lot easier to assemble some or paint some of the stuff than assemble it. So we're not doing so many different uh, masking jobs and things like that. Overall, the kit uh, went together very well and it was actually a fun little build. Uh, not too, too heavy on the part count, as you can see, throughout the build, and uh, everything fit together very well. And it's kind of fun to do something without uh, a lot of tracks and road wheels. We only have the, uh, the four regular wheels and tires, and then, of course, the spare on it. But uh, so far, this has gone together really, really well, and I look forward now to the painting process. Now, for the painting process, we're for, first going to put down a coat of XF69 NATO Black and going to cover over all of the parts. And this is going to be our shadow coat. And we're going to follow it up by doing the highlighting of white to give it our highlight coat. And as you can see right here, I've gone ahead and finished up that painting process. And you want to just keep the white in some of the highlight areas so when we put the next coat of paint on, you'll be able to see. And we're going to be using this Israeli Defense Force paint that we mix up from Tamiya. And you're going to want to use 50% XF66, 50% of XF49, equal amounts. Thin the bottles down first before you do it. 
And now, uh, now that we have the paint thinned down and all mixed up, I like to put on a nice light, light mist coat on it uh, and let it build up gradually. And the reason you're going to want to do this is because you want a lot of that black and white to show through. And this color works out so well for it because it's not super dark, but you'll still be able to see all of those, uh, those nice highlights come through. And you'll also notice too, I like to put it on kind of in a circular pattern on this. That way you don't get any striping effect when you're, uh, when you're going over it. Now I won't show the entire painting process right here, but I just want to give you a general idea uh, what I actually do for the painting. And then finally after I get the most of it on, we'll kind of give it a nice little mist coat from far back. And as you can see right here, we didn't go super heavy like I was telling you before. And you can hopefully see the, uh, the different variation in uh, paint. So you got some little light and dark spots. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to seal this entire paint process right here with some Tamiya Flat Clear. And that is going to, first of all, it'll blend everything kind of together too. And what I'll do is I'll, sh I have to go outside to spray it because this stuff's really strong smelling. But I'll, after it dries, I'll come back and show you what I'm talking about. Okay, as you can see now, we've uh, gone ahead and put the, uh, the dough coat into place. And hopefully you can see the uh, the nice effect that it has. You can still it kind of blends the paint together, so we don't have such harsh shadows, but we can still see some light and uh, dark variations in the paint. Okay, now that we have uh, that portion of the uh, and it's completely dried the dough coat now. What we're going to do is we're going to take a little bit of our chipping brown color. And the chipping brown, I always keep a big bottle of this mixed up at all times. What this color is right here is 70% NATO brown, 25% NATO black, and 5% just flat red. And we're just going to use the smallest amount on a little brush. We're just going to go over and start putting, because we want this vehicle to look a little bit beat up and worn. And just do some chips on areas that would have been, you know, stuff would have been dragged across. And this is totally up to you guys. Like I said, this is your model, so you have fun with it. If you want to beat the, you know, the heck out of it there and have it look like it's been out there for like 10 years, that's up to you. But I'm going to make it look like it's been out on patrol for a while and it's in need of a little refreshing of paint, especially the grab handles. We want to chip those up a little bit. Now, this takes a little bit of time, obviously, because we don't want to do too much of it all in one area. Uh, we want it to kind of spread out a little bit. And some areas won't have anything at all, so uh, for mine at least. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and finish this up because the camera's kind of in the way for doing that. I'm going to show you what that looks like once it's done. And then after we do that portion of it, we're going to go over with a big flat brush and we're going to do a little bit more uh, kind of like a blending chipping that'll kind of blend it all together. But I'll show you that after I get this other portion done. Okay, as we uh, start to assemble the, the wheels here, wheels and tires, I've noticed that I've popped this one in right here, and if, if you don't push super far in on it, the, the thing has a tendency to bulge out. So you can't get both sides to, to be in and out. So what I've done is I've gone ahead and obviously chosen to put the inside that has the little bit of, you can see it doesn't pop all the way in there. And if we push on this, it'll pop this side out. And this side won't be seen at all. So not too big of a deal, but just warning you guys going forward. So we'll put a little super glue on this here and kind of work that in so we get a nice smooth application between the wheel and the tire. And then after that, uh, once I get all of these put together, we can go ahead and start weathering them and uh, getting them glued on the vehicle. Okay, now I'm, that we have the wheels all attached, I'm putting a little bit of enamel thinner on here just to wet it. And then we're going to use a little bit of our Vallejo pigments, a little bit of desert dust, and a little bit of the uh, light sienna, and do a liberal coat over the entire thing, especially into all of the tread. And you can kind of blend them together here with the two.
and then you're going to want to put this all aside after you get it all completely covered, which we'll finish this one up later. Uh, when it's done, it's going to come out looking like this. And then it's just a matter of taking your cotton swab and start going over it and start knocking off all the high points so we just have dirt and dust build up inside the, uh, the wheel tread. And then sometimes the finger will work pretty good too. And it's going to take a little bit of time to get it all off, but uh, take it down to a point where you're happy with it. So I'm going to finish these up right now. We'll come back and show you what they look like. I'm just going to quickly show you the decals now. We're using a little bit of Tamiya's Mark Fit Strong, putting a coat of it underneath, taking our decal, getting it to slide into place. And that actually went pretty quick. And then we're just going to put one more small coat over on top of it to soak it in. And we're going to let that sit for a little while and it should uh, get it to stick pretty well. So I'll go ahead and put the rest of the decals on this uh, vehicle and we'll show you what they look like when it's done. Okay, now we're going to do a little, uh, little streaking on this. So I'm in the process now just taking a little enamel thinner. And I'm just going to show you this one little area that we're going to work on put a little bit of enamel thinner down then we're gonna take our enamel streaking grime put a couple little dots of it across the top here things like that and then just taking that same brush just slowly pull down on it and you can see like the little dirty areas that start to build up on it and if you take too much off Go back on there again with your, your grime and put a few more little lines in it. And then just slowly blend everything together. And these will, will show up as nice little dark streaks. And you'll put it over most of the vehicle to kind of give it a dirty effect to it. Uh, especially up on top here too, we can do a little bit. And what I like to do on the top surfaces, because it wouldn't necessarily be running, do some little blotting technique like that. And then come back up with your brush again and just tamp it down and you'll get some nice little dirty effect areas too in there. So uh, I'm gonna go over the whole vehicle, kind of put a little bit of that on. One other thing I'm gonna point out too, I was talking earlier about the, uh, the vision blocks. I thought they were clear. They're actually uh, regular plastic. So I had to go put them back in and then repaint those area. So just keep that in mind as you're about to build. I, like I said, I thought they were a clear part, but they're not. They're, the only thing that's clear are the lenses on this kit for the headlights. Well, here we are. Here is our uh, completed model. I'll go over just a couple of the things that I've done with it. I've gone ahead and painted the, uh, the other side of the mirrors with the uh, with a metal color we also went ahead and put the uh, front lights on did all of our weathering on top as you can see and then the last thing I did was sprayed the entire thing with uh, XF57 buff uh, from about 18 inches away and just did a light mist coat over everything and I like the way that just blends everything together gets everything looking really good on it so like I was telling you earlier the kit uh, was very very easy to put together part count was way down so it's something that you can you can build rather quickly and it was it was quite enjoyable overall to build uh, one other thing i probably might want to do is probably get some more stowage and stuff since it's supposed to be an israeli vehicle and there'd be stuff up in the back here and stuff i just didn't have any of it in right now and it was more or less this video was about building up this kit now, what I'll do is I'm going to show you that other little diorama scene that we had, and we'll put this on there and show you what it looks like on there. I'll also show you, before we show it on the diorama, the size difference and how small this little vehicle is compared to this, uh, this M48 Magok 3. It is, looks like this is small enough that they could throw it up on the back of this thing and uh, carry it off in case they need an extra vehicle. And that gives you an idea here now on the, uh, the diorama base. This is the one that we built up for the Magok 3 with ERA. 
but it's supposed to be a similar you know situation that it's a Middle Eastern type desert with a little rock and scrub brush around it and putting a putting a vehicle on something like this always makes it I think look a little bit better as well so I want to thank you guys as always uh, for watching and uh, please stay tuned because we have many more videos coming